Hey, it's Manu with 22 Sound. Welcome to this week's new release alert. Yeah, it is basically our job to stay up to date with what's coming out on vinyl every week. So we figured might as well share what we find and what we think the highlights are each week with y'all. That's what we're doing on this channel. And this week we're looking at release day, May 6th. Yeah, before we get into it, just one little question. Please subscribe to our channel. That really actually helps us out a lot. So we we'll really appreciate if you do. And of course, you get notified when a new video is up so you can stay up to date with what's coming out on vinyl and don't miss out on anything. All right, let's start with a really highly anticipated album. It's Arcade Fire. They're back. And yeah. Their last album was five years ago, so it's been a little while. Plus, that one was a bit controversial. Let's say a lot of their fans really hated it. So yeah, it was a little bit of a departure from their core sound, and that can kind of go either way. I mean, I understand it from an artistic point of view. Of course, you don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over. But, of course, you always run the risk to kind of alienate your fan base. Well, everything points to an album that is basically a little bit of a back to the roots thing. It's like they uh, remembered what made them so great in the first place, which is of course to be unapologetically grandiose. And yeah, based on the songs that we've heard so far and what we've been hearing, this is really an album that should appeal to a lot of um, old school Arcade Fire fans. So get excited. New Arcade Fire is coming out. It's called We. Well, next up is a band that has released their last album before Arcade Fire even released their debut. It's 80s pop titans Soft Cell. Yeah, you might remember Tainted Love. That was their monster hit in the 80s but yeah they actually did a big farewell show um yeah farewell show in 2018 at the o2 arena in london and well i guess it went so well that they said fuck it no farewell we stay around not only do we stick around we actually go and write some new songs, which they did. So this is the first album of original material in 20 years. So yeah, Soft Cell is back. Happiness Not Included is the name on the new album. Well, then we come to a band that is a little bit of a more modern band. It's Hailstorm and their new album, Back From The, ba back from the Dead. Yeah, they've been around for a little while too. I mean, their debut came out in 2009. This is their fifth album now. And well, based on what we've been hearing so far, this is the hailstorm that you know. Really not much has changed. This is still high energy rock on the verge of metal sometimes. Uh, Lizzie Hale definitely has some very strong pipes. And yeah, I mean, if you liked the old hailstorm albums, it looks like this is probably going to be another one for you they don't seem to change their core sound much but it's still really high energy rock from them with a really modern touch so definitely exciting for people who like that kind of music hailstorm back from the dead what well, next up is sharon van edden yeah, she also had a little bit of a departure saying also like uh, Arcade Fire uh, on her last album was Remind Me Tomorrow in 2019. Um, it was a little bit of a departure from that uh, more traditional, I guess, uh, folksy kind of indie rock that she did early on in her career. It was much more electronic elements in them, but it was actually really highly regarded by a lot of people. Critics loved it, was on a lot of year-end lists. Um, a lot of fans actually loved it as well. So will be really interesting to see if she kind of goes into a direction of Remind Me Tomorrow Part 2 or if she goes further back to her roots. What's interesting is she actually did not release any of the songs pre uh, prior to the album release. She um, made a statement and she really wanted people to hear the album from start to finish right off the bat, which is actually something I can appreciate. I mean, obviously, 
for the record store we love the album as an as an art form i almost only listen to albums from start to finish so can definitely um see that or understand that um thought process from her so cool that she does that well very uh, curious about it. Uh, she is one of the premier songwriters, I think, of her generation. Has a beautiful voice. And yeah, we'll see. We're going to be just really surprised where this is going. We've been going about this all wrong is the name of her new album. All right, if you have seen some of our previous videos, you know that we tend to uh, highlight mainly new releases. Um, this is what we kind of want to focus on for the most part, but if there are some cool re reissues, then we of course still want to mention that too. So here is one, an older album being reissued. It's Letterface's debut album. Yeah, Letterface was an absolutely wonderful punk band. Um, in the 90s is when they were mainly active, so it was their heyday. Um, their debut album came out in 1989 and it already had, well, all the trademarks that made them so great. Of course, the voice, this raspy kind of voice, a little bit uh, remind, or might remind a lot of people of Lemmy from Motorhead. But they always, they, what they did so well is they kind of had their own vibe. Uh, to their music, it was, uh, was kind of street punk, but there was still like a sense of melancholic kind of sense to it. Um, it's very melodic, but never poppy. A really great way. I think this album was already great. It kind of shows their progression to um, Mush, which was their masterpiece a few years later. If you ask me, my humble opinion, one of the best punk albums of all time. But this is already really great. Shows what graves, what special band they were. So really excited about di this reissue. Guess I'm gonna have to take one of those home with me. It's Cherry Knoll, Letterface's debut album from 1989 being reissued. All right, usually at this point in the video, I say last but not least, but today I'm gonna have to say last but definitely least but <laughs> here is an interesting one so one that i wanted to yeah, just mention why not not really saying go up and buy this but it is the manson family is actually um well i don't know if they have a lot to do but this album is the manson family singing songs of charles manson yeah a whole album full of that very interesting yeah well some of you might know that charles manson well, his whole path to becoming a cult leader who, you know, tells people to murder other people and start a race war was actually only plan B for his life. He really wanted to be a rock star. Yeah, that didn't quite work out, unfortunately, I guess. Um, but, well, well, you might remember Guns N' Roses once famously covered one of their songs on the Spaghetti Incident and that song was actually really quite good. Now, of course, it might have helped that Axl Rose, who is, of course, the best, sang it, but that actually makes me a little bit curious what was there. So, yeah, this is one uh, for you, um, you know, more adventurous people, maybe, if you want to check this out. It's the Manson family sings the songs of Charles Manson. All right, I think that's a good way to end this video. Again, hey, please subscribe to our channel, comment, let us know what, what you think are the highlights of this week um, for new vinyl releases. And follow us on Facebook and Instagram as well. We're under at 22 Sound Records. Uh, we put up a record of the day each, each day. Um, so you might discover some stuff. All right, see y'all next week. Thanks for watching.